afternoon and welcome back to tea time that's right we were here this morning with uh, thomas l rose and he spoke on grief and mystery now we have the amazing andrea lee austin in here and she is a co-founder of the love experience experiment a love-based consciousness movement so we're going to talk about the science technology your conscious minds all of that we're going to dig deep and we're going to get a really good strong cup of tea this afternoon for all of you guys so again like subscribe share this channel share this tea time if it resonates with you or if you know somebody that it will resonate with uh and let's get the disclaimer going and let's get some of uh, andrea's bio and then we're going to get andrea in here and i'm going to sip on my tea because my throat is getting a little itchy so we're going to do all of that and we're going to have a good strong afternoon tea together so the disclaimer for miss liz is miss liz's tea time live shows miss liz myself is going live using Streamyard. before leaving a comment please grant Streamyard permission to see your name at streamyard.com please be advised that the content brought forward for any tea time show hosted by myself miss liz is always brought forward in good faith. However, may bring forward dialogues and opinions that are not representative of my platform. The facts and information are perceived to be accurate at the giving time of airing. All tea time guests and audience participants are responsible for using their good judgment in taking any action that may relate to the discussion. The content brought forward may include discussions for some where they may be emotionally at risk. It is significant to know that this show is engaging in discussion forums only to offer and inspire awareness and connection and is not providing therapeutical advice. If you have any questions about the disclaimer or the panelist discussion, you may freely contact me, Miss Liz, through my email at bookingmissliz at gmail.com. Moving forward, should you choose to voluntarily participate in today's show in any aspect, I myself, Miss Liz, welcomes you. And should you decide that the show is not made for you at this time, I respect those wishes and we'll see you at a later show at a later date and time. And again, all tea times this year are done on a Thursday, 10 a.m., 3 p.m. and 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And if it's not a Thursday and you see a tea time, it's a rescheduled tea time that will be on a Monday or Tuesday because that's just how we roll. We keep it going. The flow keeps moving. So now a little bit on my incredible guest because I have so many questions for this woman. I'm telling you, like I went and I did my research and I was like, whoa, this is going to be a deep empowering mind-blowing experiment uh there is so many things that i want to ask andrea so a little bit on andrea andrea lee is the co-founder of the love experiment a love-based consciousness movement as i've said earlier andrea's background includes a degree in com commerce and econ economics from the university of toronto with over 22 years of experiment experience at the kpmg a global accounting firm. Then along came her passion for the met metaphysics, which led her to attending the University of Metaphysic Metaphysics, and her world took off. Realizing that metaphys metaphysics 
and spirituality was the missing link to life, love, and business. Andrea currently has 12 years of experience in the holistic and alternative energy field and has co-created My Consciousness Wellness, a platform for people to expand their consciousness using energy, tools, and technology. The core, the core focus is exploring a new approach to business and supporting others to the same. So if you'd like to read all of Andrea's full bio, you can check out Miss Liz's Facebook page. Let me get Andrea in here and let's spill a good cup, a strong cup of tea, because I feel a good one coming. <laughs> good afternoon, Andrea. Oh, I can't wait to have tea. I almost forgot. So my gorgeous partner's making it my favorite cup. It's coming in the room in a moment. <laughs> oh, yes. I do remember that through the email. You were saying that you're going to bring your favorite tea cup. I can't uh, wait to see it. So, yeah. Andrea, I want to start off with how I start off every tea time. I want to know who you were as a little girl and who you are now. Oh, geez. Good thing we didn't prep. Um, so, as a little girl, I would say um, a little one full of love, uh, hope, and optimism. Um, who, am, who am I now? I'd like to say that it's still the same, um, but I would say it's the same. I've always been that little girl. It took me time to get back here in all transparency, um, but one that does believe in love, one that does believe in optimism, and one that does believe in humanity. I like that you said it took you a while to get back here because, you know, we sometimes <laughs> when we're little, we get in that middle age and then we just kind of lose ourselves and then we're like, what the heck? What happened? <laughs> Right, life happens. You meet someone. You get married. You have the kids. You, you know, and you lose your way. You lose, lose yourself. And I, I and that's what I wanted to talk to you about today. Uh, when I did the research, I was my mind was blown. I was like, "Whoa, this is going to be a really incredible educational cup of tea this afternoon." So if you guys have a notebook or stuff, and you want some tips and tools, I, I suggest you go and grab those because there's going to be a lot of good pointers come in today. I, I feel it. I feel it in the tea. So the tea is going to be strong. So, <laughs> Andrea, I want to get into the consciousness. Hmm. I want you to explain that to the view and the viewers and listeners out there that might not understand what the consciousness is because some people don't know. Yeah, that makes great sense. Um, and, and in all transparency, I can't say you that I know, no. This will be my expression of what I feel consciousness is. And everyone I think has a unique aspect of what that means to them. So when I explain it, what I say to people is also explore. Uh, exploring consciousness to me, um, or what that word means is exploring what goes beyond what we think, see and feel sort of in this I'm going to say linear reality. So what goes beyond us being human or what makes us human? Um, what drives us? To me, that's, that's the exploration of consciousness. And for us, that can go in 9,000 directions. Um, so we have this belief, and I say we because it's, you know, there's a number of us that are kind of following it in this way is we say exploring consciousness through love. Um, because to me, consciousness explored through love, whether it be through spirituality or how we do business or what does energy mean? I mean, it's, to me, consciousness is just everything that creates who and what we are. Um, the reason I would suggest we anchor it in love is because there's lots of other ways to explore, you know, what's going on in your life and in this world it can be through fear it can be through anger it can be through you know all kinds of different streams but to us anchoring it in love sort of seems to lead the direction that helps us follow that exploration right of what that is for each of us through our own hearts and through our own belief systems not necessarily what others are telling us consciousness should be so it's not a word I knew, uh, <laughs> you know, 12, 15 years ago. They don't teach you that in university when you're going through to be an accountant. But it became a word that sort of sat in my 
my my world and I've been exploring it ever since. And so it can all have all kinds of facets. It can be how how do how do we evolve? You know, how can we evolve? How did we get here? I mean, it's just this rabbit hole that um, for me uh, gets me excited, you know, keeps me awake uh, in, in a fun way during the day. And for others, it can be a self-exploration um, of how we journey, how we got here, how can I move past what I'm currently in? To me, that's what consciousness is. So, Andrea, when you say evolve, could you explain a little deeper on what evolve is? Hmm. I yeah, want to really sure. dig deep with you because I feel like you have the answers within you for others to understand consciousness. Because when I looked at the word consciousness, as you've seen in the intro video, you've seen a lot of the mind with the expressions of everything coming out of the mind. And you're talking about everything that flows, right? The love, the flow of life, the flow of humanity, hmm. the involvement and involving of humanity. You know, uh, I'm a big, huge humanitarian. And when I get somebody who is a humanitarian as well, I just want to pick their brains and I want to say, how can we involve this world? How can we make this world better? Right. <laughs> uh, and, that we don't speak, and we don't speak of these words very often. You know, a lot of people don't use these words in everyday life. So like consciousness and evolve and all of that. A lot of people don't use these words. So I want to start using these words. So I want to get your perspective on what evolving is. Yeah. And I love how you brought a uh, humanitarian into this and I got my teacup just so we're playing. <gasps> oh, look at that gorgeous cup. <laughs> so, so when you, when you called the show in and thanks for bringing the humanitarian piece, um, cause I think it ties into what you asked me at the beginning. I think in my heart, um, even as a child, um, I had feelings of, let's call it humanitarianism. Um, and you would think that's funny given I became a tax accountant and then we'll go to the word evolve. But the reason I chose that, that particular profession, even at the time and when I look back, is underneath it, I had always wanted to help. So I chose to be a tax accountant and to teach tax because most people hated that subject and they ran from it. And people were afraid of that topic and I wanted to see if I could make it easy. And so when this metaphysical element or consciousness element showed up, I always kind of had this sense that I would begin to start explaining from my heart why it's, it's so big for me and see if we could simplify. So let's give that a crack and let me know how I do today. Um, so evolve. I think what I've come to realize is if you are able to step out and look at the history of, of humanity um, and the world and kind of documented it, right? Right from the beginning of humanity, however you want to believe how that started to where it is today, right? And you look at the world and you look at its history. You can look at it like um, a pattern. Um, a pattern that um, so far appears to have cycles uh, more um, primarily driven, let's call it that, based on fear or scarcity or lack or loss. And that makes sense, right? I mean, if you if you believe that humans evolve, you know, originally from caveman days, or there's lots of other theories out there, most of of what the human species has 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 witnessed, let's call it, when you look at the history, has not been um, really all that uplifting, right? A yeah. lot of war, a lot of trauma, a lot of all that kind of stuff, right? So. When I look at evolution, I don't mean it necessarily the evolution of the, you know, from the little DNA up to the human form. I mean, the evolution of the actual way that that humans can and have the capacity to evolve to a species, if you want to call it that, that can actually connect more consistently and create more consistently through through the energy of love rather than the consistent energy of fear and not that that's good bad or otherwise to be honest i'm not sure in the grand scheme of the universe it matters but maybe it does 
And so when we tie the word evolve to humanitarianism, what I, I truly feel is that there is this call, let's, let's call it that, for us to more consciously or openly, right, choose to evolve or expand um, through the consciousness or the energy or the language of love, however you want to translate that, rather than continuing to follow the old patterns or the very well-grounded patterns in most of our our lives and families, even in some of you know the most robust um, economic systems in the world, many of them are still founded in the belief systems of fear or the belief systems of trauma or scarcity or lack. So, you know, if, when we talk about the word evolve, you know, our intention or our hope is that there'll be more and more people that say, okay, enough is enough of the drama, trauma, fear. And we actually wish to choose to move forward, whether it be in our own personal lives or our businesses or how we interact in the world, but we consciously choose to evolve through love, that we've had enough of the other. And that, that takes courage uh, for most right now, because a lot of us um, have been hurt. A lot of us have experienced anything else but that right you look around and go where's yeah. the love you know um <laughs> everyone is living in it. fear like you, you know there's four letters to fear and there's four letters to love you know we can take the positive from the fear from the positive from the love and put it into the fear and reverse it into the unfear you know we, we need to change our mindset and the consciousness of how we believe and and open up. It's like you said in the beginning, Andrea, you know, so many people tell us how to be, where to be, who to be. We need to figure out who we are for ourselves. Yes. You know, we have to take control of our minds. We have to take control of the mind, the, the conscious common sense, you know, common sense needs to kick in at some point. You know, and humanity needs to evolve. It doesn't mean that we're all like cavemen coming back and saying, hey, hey this is my, <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, <laughs> we are bigger. We, we we are bigger than cavemen. We are individuals and we are a unique species. I, I look at ourselves as species, you know, we're yeah. human beings, but we come from the universe. So yeah. we, we come with this different energy and the energy that we put out there is the energy that we receive. So if we put the energy of fear and destruction and corruption, that's what we're gonna get, you know? It's that mirror of what we're giving out to the world. Yes, we'll have our hard days and all of that. And that's why I really, when I was doing my homework on you, Andrea, and my conscious wellness, I was like, whoa, this is gonna be like my cup of tea, like my, my kind of thing. I love deep, deep, deep conversations and a deep, strong understanding of the world. You know, there's so much negative in the world, but there's so much positive. Yes. But the positive is not getting seen because the negative is outweighing the positives. So we need to bring the balance back. You know? Well, and that's why I'm even grateful for this conversation today. Thank you. Because I, I agree. Um, the more we can, are able to connect and focus on the positiveness and the love and the expansion, we actually don't truly understand how much we are impacting this world simply just even by having this or other conversations. So thank you. Oh, you're very welcome. Thank you for coming. You know, this morning we talked about grief and mystery, and I feel like my guests this week are going to align again because we're going to be talking about fear and money and accounting and, you know, and grief is just listening. The subconsciousness is just listening. Money is an energy. We're talking about different types of energy today, you know, in different forms. It's the way we look at it. It's the perspective of how we look at these cups, you know. So, Andrea, I want to get into the tea, and then I want to get into more of, the, of what you do. But if I give you the word tea, what three words would you give me today? Honestly, the ones we've already talked about. So love, uh, for sure, evolve, and expansion is the three that really stand out for me today. 
Now you want to tell me a little bit about those three words? For sure. Um, love is an energy. Um, it's not what we've been taught. And love to me is a lifelong journey. It can be love of self. Um, it can be love of what we do. It can be love of anything. But choosing that choice to connect and evolve through love is to me what brings us the nutritious sort of delicious life that we're all seeking inside of ourselves and i question whether that leaves not by by not choosing that can leave us much more empty inside of ourselves than we realize and the universe is doing it again we're talking about food and we're talking about cookbooks this way. You, you know how the energy of the universe just has its way of working things out the way it is and again, to all my viewers out there, these tea times are all booked at different times. I don't know how it's done. The universe does it for me. But all of my guests each week always align with their messages. So I really wow. want to thank you, Andrea, because the nutrition, you know, is the food. The yeah. food, food of thought, you know, that we bring to the table. You know, how we serve, how we bring our teas. And that's what we do here on Tea Time is we just serve real strong teas. We don't, you know, the beverage is an enjoyable beverage to enjoy, but it's the tea of, of stories, the tea of connection and, you know, alignment. Like, mm. I just feel like today's tea was just meant to be like, you know, uh, I had no clue until I started doing my homework and I was like, I guess I do homework, guys. Uh, and I was just <laughs> like, oh, this is going to be a good one. <laughs> <laughs> so, Andrea, I want to get into the money because we're going to be doing money tonight with the with the, the last guest. But you are you have been working for an accounting for accounting for many many years, over twenty two years. So, from accounting yeah. to metaphysics, how did that transform? That's so cool. Eh? Um, I think the short answer is when I. At the end of the 22 years I needed, I knew I needed to do something to transition my life. It wasn't nurturing, you know, me and my soul anymore. And when I came across um, an incredibly divine partner, we started to journey together and, and we journeyed together, let's say primarily through uh, metaphysics, not knowing it at the time and when we started to create our own more strong organization my conscious wellness today sort of the message was that it was my job to uh, let's call it figure out how our our organization wanted to be distributed or how it wanted to be run and so what started to show up in my existence was um writings and teachings, some of them current, some of them past, about this concept of sacred commerce or sacred exchange. And so I feel like as I started to read some of those works, I started to remember. I started to remember, you know, how, how businesses or communities were meant to work together without letting money get in the way. And it felt like an old and ancient text at the same time. And then I started to read some of the current uh, economic books I haven't read in a long time. I never thought I'd be reading that stuff again. <laughs> um, seriously, it did not. And I started to see a pattern. I started to realize that much of our current economic systems were based in fear. And I started to recognize what if we could start to change the systems, right? The money is actually not the problem. It's just a form of energy exchange. Um, but it's the way in which it's been treated, the way it's which it's been manipul manipulated and so on. Because, you know, there are many people that say, oh, we could put an entire new economic system in tomorrow and we'd be great. And I, I might say maybe not. Because again, it's just a tool and it's mm -hmm. how we use those tools, how we distribute the tools. 
And so all of a sudden my life started to make more sense um, because I do have this background um, or former background in business. I've always loved it. Then I'm in this metaphysical consciousness space and I'm like, how do these two align? Like I thought I was nuts at one point. <laughs> I truly did. And then um, when I started to study metaphysics a little more formal, I found this area in, um, it's a PhD in conscious business ethics. And I started to realize that there are other people in the world that are really looking at how we operate our businesses and money and exchange differently in the world. And that got me excited. So that's kind of the bridge between those two and how I landed those two and, and will likely continue for the rest of my life. It's just way too much fun for me. <laughs> I, I like that you brought in, you know, that how society and how we've been programmed to look at currency, you know, yeah. uh, especially the biggest message is if you're not making seven figures, you're a nobody. You know, it, we really got to stop putting a currency amount on people and individuals because somebody who has zero dollars can change someone's life in a heartbeat. Yeah. You know, and it's it's like you said, the currency is not the issue. It's what we've been directed and told by society how to look at currency, you know, because a lot of people say, Miss Liz, you're scared to make money. I'm not scared of money. I'm scared of the message that comes with the money. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I am, you know, because there's so much of the society that labels us once we get certain amounts of money, uh, livestock. If you're making over a hundred thousand and you're mid light and you're mid mid citizen now, where a hundred thousand dollars twenty years ago was a rich man, you know. That's how much society has changed. Uh, my goal in life is to show people that you don't need the currency to make the difference. Yeah. You know, you need the energy of pushing and continuing. And I think that's what currency does to us is it gives us that drive to push. But then when we get that drive to push, we're like, Ooh, I don't know if I want this drive anymore. Cause this drive is kind of taking me onto a different path. It's almost like you said, right at the beginning, right? You know, you, you lost your way a little bit and then you had to find your way. And I feel that that's how life is. You know, we all get misguided or misused or in wrong directions. And then we have to find ourselves <coughs> and we have to bring ourselves back. And that's where the subconscious comes in. So again, Andrea, like what the work that you're doing and the services mm -hmm. that you and your spouse offer, I'm my goodness, like, I'm just like, why are we not seeing enough of this? Why are we not seeing more of this? You know, um, I, it's just, we need more of the subconscious understanding, you know, and yeah. the metaphysics. We need to start having these deep, honest conversations about humanity. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we need to start bringing different to the table having different flows and that and again your flow is incredible uh so i want to talk about some of the services that you do offer and so i did find some uh, some of the allowing my truth i want to get into that because a lot of people are like well i know my truth i know who i am but do you honestly know your truth so i want to get into that <laughs> that's a great one <laughs> mm, good choice um what do you want to know about it particularly or is it just a wide is there something that stood out for you because you'll hear a lot of people say this is my truth that's mm. the, this is my truth but what is your truth when you ask gotcha. them they can't explain it ah uh, okay so i'll see if i can explain that as i've seen it what we think is our truth today um I might suggest if we're not evolving, um, shouldn't be our truth tomorrow. Strong word and should. Um, but I think it's really common for all of us to think that our belief systems, that what we think is truth for ourselves today is going to be truth for ourselves tomorrow. And I think it's really common for us to hold on to that. And um, allowing my truth as an example of that initiative, 
was to use some of our tools, let's call them frequency-based, energy-based tools in the background that are working in the subtle energy fields, right? Um, rem beginning to dissolve some of those truths that really may not be your own. So I think it's really easy um, as a human or human species or as a person to think that you have certain belief systems that are truth for you because they're often imprinted, right, from parenthood, childhood, society. And it can be hard, even though we don't know it, to not know what our truth really is. And so when we talk about allowing the truth, what we're really talking about is allowing a connection to the greater part of ourselves. Some would call that soul, some would call that God, whatever that is, universal consciousness, um, or our heart in the simplest of ways, is in our heart what's really true for us. And those can be clouded um, by, by the limited linear thinking mind or by the patterns or the families and, and the experiences we've had. And so the invitation around allowing your truth is a deeper connection to allow what is not true for you to more naturally fall away rather than to have to think about it much more. And then watch naturally what begins to surface out of that as to what really is, you know, truth for you. And truth can be defined by so many things. I think it's constantly evolving. I, I don't think there is any one truth. Um, this goes back to the whole evolution discussion. But that's what allowing my truth was about. And in that experience, we used several sound and subtle energy tools within the people in the groups that choose to participate to just help allow the letting go process to happen a little more naturally without having to overthink it um, in a trusted and safe environment amongst the group, but also the people that chose to participate. So what type of sounds do you use for the letting go process? Yeah, there's, um, there's essentially three major doorways, two that are used in the online experiences. One is a, a profound tool that we, um, worked with, with a group called Quantum Sound Therapy years ago. Super grateful for that tool and you'll find that. And it's called um, Soul Tones or My Personal Frequencies. And so everybody who chooses to participate from anywhere in the world, um, you have to have a cell phone somehow or access to a computer, but can create a set of frequencies based on your voice. And the software that was created by Quantum Sound that we still use creates a 24 minute set of frequencies from the voice um, to create a set of harmonics that can be audibly listened to in the background going about your day to use sound and vibration to help begin to let go some of the stories in our subtle energy field that are not our truth. And so the more you listen, the more you they work. They're kind of like a good piece of music, but now it's really designed for you. So in each initiative, or it can be done separately, we create a set of statements and affirmations around allowing my truth, and then people say them into this frequency-based um, audio that the computer then analyzes over a billion bits of data and creates this 24-minute set of harmonics designed just for you. So we're grateful to Quantum Sound because this is one of the doorways that we've been using oh, over 14 years um, for both of us to help listen to, to help let go, and they can be used anytime, anywhere. Um, so that's the first tool. And then specifically around this one initiative using Allowing My Truth as an example, is we then combine it with the power of group intention, which has been proven around the globe that when like people focus on a common intention, the energy moves. And then we use, um, this is a little bit more energy, remote energy tools, we call them remote energy support. But they are some of the most advanced quantum biofeedbacks in the world. And these energy systems are 
tools, um, use focused energy in your subtle energy field while these experiences are going on to also um, it's, it's um, loosen some of the debris or the energy or the stagnant energy. That's a better way of looking at it sitting in your vibrational field that is no longer truth for you. So we're not overriding free will here or anything like that, but just using these two tools around a specific intention to begin to lift some of the denser energy that sits in all our fields simply by being a product of living on planet earth, right? And then letting that move slowly and subtly out of the energy field so that there's a greater lightness, a greater connection more naturally to who you really are. Sometimes you kind of go, wow, I all of a sudden used to be this and now I'm this. So it's a natural process, allowing the energy to move and then you to naturally step more solidly into who you are. So we have a so question. Are... We have a question here for you, Andrea. Could mm -hmm. you explain a little bit more about the quantum? The quantum biofeedbacks? Mm -hmm. I can, to a certain extent, understand um, that I'm not the quantum scientist. Um, my conscious wellness has been a group of us who have all come together with various different tools. So I can certainly provide, you know, more, let's call it quantum natural energy medicine from somebody else in our group than I can. But the way I look at it is your energy, I'm energy. Okay. And even as we're talking right now, we are connecting and we are influencing each other's energy. Even as we're talking and you're listening to this discussion between us, right? Our energy and your energy is interacted. There's no space and time. And this for sure has been shown in lots of different science in the world. So that isn't something totally new in the world, but it might be new for people listening and that I get. Yeah. This part was the hardest part for me to digest when it first arose. I fought it pretty hard because my linear mind was like, well, how's that possible? But imagine if I was sitting here right now and I was focusing or meditating and sending love to somebody else across the world. In truth, I am impacting them. Uh, if they're aware enough and not everybody can, I get it. They would actually feel it. So yeah. when we sit here and I send Liz love as I'm sitting here, I am actually impacting you and your field. So these quantum biofeedbacks that were originally uh, created um, by a man named Bill Nelson were used and are still being used in the most profound ways around the globe, traditionally by practitioners to help subtly and now instead of using a person, I'm using these really very cool quantum computers, right? And that's where the gap for most people is. Like we're used to using Google for computers. We used to <laughs> look in things up, but you're like, how the hell could a computer impact my energy field, right? Yep. Um, but the truth is, even as I'm sitting on this computer talking to you right now, it's impacting my energy field. And not always for the benefit. I don't mean it's it's electronics, right? So it's, pu it's the, pulling the energy from us, from the energy that we need to provide, if that makes any sense. You know, because as much as the technology is good, we still have to hold some form of subconscious to control the mind, because technology at any point can come in and take the mind and overpower and that's where a lot of people are scared of technology with the ai's coming in and the you know and all of the other new things that are coming in it's because you're giving them the opportunity to overtake your mind overtake your thoughts yeah that's interesting so let me bridge that along with the quantum computers because i think i can pull those together yep any tool or any person or anything can be used for or against humanity Okay, so if you remember that we're a soul, right, at, at an ultimate level, and that may not be true for everyone, and I get that, took me time to digest that one too. But if you remember that we're all souls, we're all orchestrating on yeah. some level this reality together. So these quantum computers were brought in or designed to help support 
the human energy field. There's not a doubt in my mind. I've seen them in action. I've seen how they're capable. And then they kind of um, disappeared for a while. There was a lot of pushback in society, understandably. But now there's a resurgence because there is a lot of writing and a lot of research being done on how the human energy field can be supported by these sorts of subtle energy technologies. And so, and it's surfacing in all kinds of places. You can do lots of research. And yes, I, I'm sure technology is being used um, that isn't supportive of the human form, but there are lots that are. Yeah. And so these quantum computers, which have been around for a long time, um, are being used to support people's subtle energy fields all around the globe, both remotely and in person. And so when we start to offer our services to people, we're able to use these quantum computers or focused energies to help strengthen and support your energy field. And as we start to strengthen it, right, it starts to naturally let go of some of, let's call it the debris, right, that isn't in resonance or supportive of the form. And as that happens, we more naturally become stronger within ourselves, begin to understand our own truth or our own belief systems. And we begin to naturally get rid of the things that are not in resonance with love which is our intention when we go through these experiences. So, Andrea, we have a question here. I'm just, it's a big book, so I'm going to just try and put it together here. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so how do you feel about the AI technology, mm -hmm. number one? And second Good of question. all, do you feel that the AI is imperfect for a reason? Uh, I can't say, I'll go backwards on that question. I can't say I know that AI is imperfect. So I, I won't speak to that, but I think like any tool, uh, it's in a birthing phase. And there's an excitement um, on some level because there are certain things, like let's be honest, that not every person wants to do anymore, that it would be really fun to let something else do it for you so that you could enjoy your life more. Um, I can understand the fear around AI. Uh, we've had some really interesting recent discussions with other groups that are focusing on AI in the world that isn't uh, necessarily our focus or intention in the moment. But what I have recognized is there are people in the world that understand that AI with a foundation of, let's say, um, love or nature or natural sort of intelligence around how nature works and how the human energy field works could be a significant assistance in helping um, the human species evolve. Not taking away uh, control, um, not overriding uh, human free will or free choice actually don't um, subscribe to that i understand i'm not saying some of that hasn't happened i just don't subscribe to that belief system um but i think that ai like any tool in the hands of the right beings can be profound and so i don't think it's any different and about any of the other technologies you know i often <laughs> i have a joke <laughs> sorry if you don't find this funny i'm knock, sorry knock. now knock knock who's there so knock knock there creation right so along comes a spider who sat down beside her right there's a bit of a joke that we as a human species get some of the most profound ideas in the world and how to to assist others but when we go back to the beginning of the conversation, right, about patterns and consciousness, then what happens is sometimes the humans might just a little bit screw it up. And I'm a big believer, not always as consciously as they think, because we're still templating it through fear, scarcity, lack and loss. Doesn't mean the idea wasn't a great one. But then we get it out into the hands of people and it starts becoming more complex than the original idea was given, right? 
I think we're given ideas all day, every day on how to create this and do this. And it's super cool. But what happens is then we start to template them through scarcity or holding or lack. And we're not focusing on using that creative idea or that tool on how we can help people, how we can move forward, how we can create more love. And then the world gets a little funky. I don't know if that's the true same for AI. This is just Andrea Austin's personal opinion. God knows she might be wrong. Um, but I wonder that about AI. I think it might be a really cool idea. The question is, what do we choose to do with it? And how do we choose to empower it or disempower it? And this goes to any tool, right? If the tool yeah. doesn't resonate, don't use it. Like that's just, I think that's some of the, the things we're encouraging, you know, intuitively or common sense, however you want to phrase that, but check in with yourself. And if it doesn't feel right, then, then don't engage with it. Because I think that goes to the empowerment piece and the choice piece. Well, it's like anything Great else question. out there, right there, Andrea. Like, you know, it depends on the person whose hands are in it. You know, if yeah. you got bad, bad vibe, the bad vibes that it's not right for you, don't do it. You know, run common sense. <laughs> Listen to your gut. Listen to your insides. Like, like if something is your hair on the on the end of your arms are up, and you, you no, I shouldn't. I shouldn't. Mm -hmm. Then don't do it. Like, you know, yeah, run. Yeah. I met this most amazing woman. To give you an example of that, she actually um, helped a group of women. It's a profound story. Oh my god, I'd love to link you up to get her on tea time. I think you guys would have an amazing time together. Anyway, her short story is she ended up spending time in the New York, New York State Prison. That's a totally different discussion and an amazing one on how she ended up there. But she ended up working with 52 or 62 women on helping them get out of the system and move back into life. And 99% of them admitted that when they went to do, let's call it whatever deed got them into trouble and got them into jail, the, they knew intuitively not to do it but they didn't listen to to the hair on their arms or the back of the neck because they made decision based on fear now understandably i get it no condemnation on my part fear around their children or fear around whatever you know their husbands and they didn't listen and they ended up in jail and so that that point is so powerful when it comes to anything and and i love how you're phrasing that thank you well, you know, we have to start listening to ourselves. You know, yeah. we know ourselves the best. Stop listening to outside voices. You know, listen to your gut, listen to your intuition, listen to your subconscious. You know, if it's not right, don't do it. You know, and with the AI, I've experienced with the AI, I've played with the AI, and I find, and I like to test its mind and I want to see where it's going to take me because I just love digging in the mind of energy and the mind of technology because that's just who miss liz is uh, it's one of my passions of just digging deeper where how deep can we go right so i want to get into the infinity series that you have that you offer mm, yes uh, time is just flying by because that's just how energy works it just flies by when we're having oh fun, my god right? is it ever <laughs> i was like holy god it can't be that time it is everyone's like miss liz an hour i can't give you an hour yes you can trust me you can because they keep the conversation going so i want to get into the infinity series and then i want to get into the water mm. when i say the water i want you to explain to the viewers and listeners out there about the hexagon hexagonal hexagonal water water yeah. Uh, okay, so the Infinity Series uh, was a divine inspiration. There's no other way to phrase it. Uh, we are not scientists um, by any stretch, but we had been working or have been working with scalar energy technologies for a number of years in this life. And it was birthed by divine inspiration uh, four years ago. There are three physical Techno or two, actually, we decided to, to put one in the back seat for now. Two physical, literal technologies. There's one in my lap right now um, where we're combining in the simplest way frequencies, certain geometric shapes, copper coiling, and other elements to create vibrational energy fields 
that are meant to be placed in homes, offices, and businesses 24 seven to create a more gentle, coherent energy field, environmental field for people to actually live in. So that's the infinity series. Um, there's two in the moment. There's, well, there was three, the third one's kind of reworking and there was a fourth one sitting on the drawing board. And what, what we were shown is each one will draw a different soul. Um, they're kind of like flavors of the rainbow. Some people like red, some people like yellow. They're all different energies, same core concept, different energies. And that energy is meant to support the individuals that feel called or choose them to put them into their field to help strengthen and support the connection to who they are as a soul or as a being um, while they're in this third dimensional reality. So that's the infinity series. So are you, are you saying that certain objects and text and design work with yep. the mind? They well, way beyond the mind that we're okay. actually working with the entire subtle energy field. Okay. So we're working with the human subtle energy field with the consciousness and the soul. Um, we're not working. They're just instruments that are placed in your environment. And in my simple language, the longer they're running, right, they're creating these expanded energy fields, which makes it easier for you as a, a soul or an expanded consciousness to live in while you're in this world. They do naturally start to help release some of the dramas and traumas as well especially because they can be run 24 seven. And there's a whole community of us um, actually that have been working with them for years. So you will start to see, not today if you go onto my CW, but soon station near you, um, a whole community element. But we don't mean community in the traditional way. What we mean is a whole bunch of very interesting, very awesome beings who have journeyed with these instruments and are showing people how they're using them or incorporating them in their own way. Because there is no standard template in our world. We're all unique beings and unique souls. We're just providing energy to support people in their own evolution. I really love that. Unique. I love when people are different and unique. I tell everybody this all the time. Just be you, be different, you know, because when you start dissolving into someone else's beliefs of who you are, you lose that uniqueness about yourself. Yes. You know, you lose that energy. It's, it's like the energy is being pulled from you and people can feel when your energy is not real. Yep. You know, when you walk into a room and you can say, Oh, I don't know about that one. Mm, this one is really cheery, cheery, but Oh, the energy, I'm not sure about that. You know, or you walk up and somebody's really quiet and they got this incredible strong energy that is just pulling you in because they're so scared to show their energy because of society because of patterns because of what people the stigma you know of being unique has done to us you know and that's why i am so so I, I, I'm so inspired by this tea time this afternoon because I've been actually sitting with somebody who's unique, somebody who's actually not scared of saying, you know what, we're unique individuals and we bring something different to the table, you know? So for all the listeners out there, if you're listening and if you listen to the replay and you and you share this with others, know that you matter, that your yeah. energy matters. We need to start celebrating people's energies, people's individuality, you know, so I want to get into, we're almost at the end here. I want to get into the water because when I seen the water, I was like, okay, I want to know about this water. What's so special about the water? That's very cool. Um, I'll um, begin by the water. I believe that you'll see on our site um, is from quantum sound therapy. And I got introduced to that water 11 years ago. I was born and raised in the city of Toronto and pretty much people would say drink eight glasses a day. And I would say not going to happen. <laughs> and, and that was, yeah, that was my first introduction, right? To the vibration of water. And there's been so much written on this now um, that I almost forgot that was there. But what I noticed was we are 
we are in general 70 to 80 to 90 percent water depending on how old we are and the vibration of the water that we drink matters i mean that's the simplest message in that and i had no idea and so when i first got introduced to hexagonal water through quantum sound therapy i chugged that water uh like never before and th and that alone told me something right it told me one that i was dehydrated as all hell um and then two that the vibration did matter and um regretfully a lot of the water that we're drinking in general right now is not of the highest vibration and understandable right there's i think eight billion people on this planet now and the water has a history and everything of the history of the water is stored in the water. You know, on the plus side of that, um, we've been having recent discussions then, is that means that consciousness or we connect through water. And I remember Robert Loy, the founder of Quantum Sound, talking about that when I first met him. And then there's profound work by Dr. Emoto um, about the profoundness of water. And it told me then ultimately that vibration does matter. If we're 70% water and, and our water or our energy fields are being impacted by everything around us, then vibration and what we drink and what we environmentalize ourselves and what we place ourselves in does matter. And so that water, uh, I jokingly, but not so much say, say saved my, my soul, saved my ass years ago um because it was a way to bring energy frequency and vibration also more deeply into the cell structure into my physical form to help me flush out some of the toxins and some of the things that were in my body now there's lots of different theories and discussions around water but the underlying message is just to start seeing if people can find higher vibrational sources of water then I always encourage them to do that in whatever form that takes for them. You know, for some people that can be natural spring water, for some people it's a technology, for some people it's purchasing different forms of water, if you can. But just starting to be aware, right, of, you know, the water that we're ingesting in our bodies. And I had no idea. Did make a lot of sense though, um, because most top tap water I still to this day uh, cannot ingest. Um, just doesn't feel right. So I drink tea, helps boil some of it out, you yep. know. Um, but uh, water matters. And that's really the message from that one. So if anybody would like to reach out to you, Andrea, how could they reach out to you? Great question. Uh, well, through my CW. If you go through my CW, you'll find me, my partner, and one other person. We're not that big. So if you're curious and you just want to ask questions, don't hesitate. We're not we're not hard sellers at any by any stretch. Um, if you're comfortable messaging, uh, you can go through LinkedIn. Happy to chat live or you know in person or just through messaging, because that part makes us happy. Um, we're not a big organization. There's you know three to five soon, maybe ten of us who are out doing this kind of thing, but we're part of a bigger group and we'd be more than happy to open the door and explore what that means for others. So what's your final message to everybody today? Oh, that one's easy. Choose love. <laughs> <laughs> and I knew that was going to be short and easy because when I asked you to describe yourself with one word, you gave me the word love, you know, it all comes down to love. Yep. You know, we all got to start just loving one another. You know, let's stop with the fear. Let's stop with the hate. Let's just bring love and let's all connect. And that's what Tea Time is all about, is connecting all the love out there and all the different unique individuals that are out there that we might not always see and know about. And you can find all of these guests on Tea Time with Miss Liz. I get out there and I start looking for different. And my unique rebels or troublemakers or whatever you guys want to call us conspiracies or whatever you want to call <laughs> unique different individuals and we all come to this table and we share a good strong cup of tea so andrea i really want to thank you for joining me today on tea time and sharing my conscious wellness i am going to be reaching back out to you after the show because there's so many more questions i have for you um and i want to thank all the viewers for tuning in i will see everybody back at 7 
p.m. Eastern Standard Time with Kaylee Brosbert, and she'll be talking about Money Wise, and she has a children's book. So we're going to talk some children's book and adults' books, and we're going to take the fear of money away from you tonight at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Tea Time. So until then, I will see everybody tonight.